Hello friends, my name is Aslam Sheikh, your host for this evening. I'm a founder and CEO of Aleph, a platform to promote the global perspective of education and career. This is our 61st webinar series and broadcasted live on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Every Friday, we aim to bring in the valuable speakers to discuss the topic that is important to you and for your career. And before going further, those who are joining us first time, let me uh, quickly introduce you who we are and what we do. And after that, we'll come back to the very important and interesting session for today. Uh, here is the link uh, and here is the sharing of my screen and hopeful that it's visible to you. So, well, the company name is Aleph. It's the first alphabet in Arabic and Urdu language, which signifies the beginning. And hence, we kept this name because for most of you, it would be your first uh, new chapter opening up in your life in terms of study abroad. Uh, we, as a company established in the year 2008-2009, we have counseled over 23,000 students so far. We maintain a very healthy 100% admission ratio to the universities and colleges we represent. We maintain 95% visa ratio across all the countries and we represent 14 plus countries. As a company, we are internationally and nationally affiliated to some of the important bodies like ICEF, WEBA, UniAgent, to name a few. We are also the Singapore Education Specialist uh, by the Singapore Tourism Board. Uh, last year, well, we had a good reason to rejoice because we were chosen among the top 10 most recommended overseas education consultants by the very uh, reputed Insight Success Media House. We also promise our students a 100% guarantee to the admission to the universities we represent after going through your applications. Uh, these are some of the universities, colleges across the countries where our students are studying their foundation, bachelor's or master programs. Uh, we also help our students to, this, uh, to get the scholarship. Up till 2019, we help our students to get a scholarship worth equivalent to rupees 23 crores uh, for various courses and across the countries we represent. And these are some of the scholarship headings in front of you for which you can apply. Uh, what well we do is that we help the students for the very first step. Uh, most of the time students are confused what to do in their life, uh, what uh, career should they choose, what pathway should they follow. And we offer the career counseling and we use a very modern technology and uh, tools to help you identify your right step and your uh, inner strengths. We also help the students to get coached for IELTS exam. This is the English test, which is almost compulsory by all the universities and colleges. We also won a single, uh, the, the silver partner award by the British Council. Well, in study abroad, uh, right from student profiling, and we have a 3C model, what we call is choosing the right course, right college, and right country. Uh, we do help uh, the students in terms of completing the application process, writing a very constructive SOPs, uh, getting the education loan through the banks that we have a tied up with, a visa process, fee transfer, air ticket, foreign exchange, pre-departure, and finding the suitable accommodation based on your budget and preference. Uh, these are the countries across different continents of Europe, North America, Middle East, and Asia Pacific, where we have a strong representation of reputed universities. Uh, we are very active on social media, so do follow us on Facebook or Insta or join us or subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have a lot of contents created every week uh, to keep you updated on study abroad affairs. Uh, of course, pre-pandemic, we used to do a lot of uh, uh, offline events. But nevertheless, we are very active on online, so you can join us for any of our offline or online events and keep yourself, your parents updated about what's happening in study abroad field. We also visit a lot of universities. We meet our students. We get trained by the universities so that we know that uh, what is best suitable to you and we get a live feedback from our students from that particular institute. Uh, well, uh, the last thing about me, uh, I've counseled over 1,000 plus students. Uh, I've traveled and repeatedly traveling to over 14 countries. I'm a certified counselor by ISEF, WEBA, and British Council. I'm also the ex-member, uh, 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 ex-president of BNI Plus Chapter, which is one of the largest networking group in the world, and the executive member of Bombay Industry Association. I'm also very active on uh, the member of uh, Chamber of Commerce of Swiss, German, US, and uh, other countries. I was also named among the top 10 best consulting leaders by a reputed knowledge review uh, media house and educational magazine. 
So here uh, is the brief introduction about us and let's move on to our today's program and let's discuss our today's very, very interesting topic. And today's topic is Singapore's top institute exploring PSB Academy. And to discuss this exciting subject, we have with us an expert speakers and let me do the honor of introducing them. And let me have in the room uh, our first speaker, Dr. Sam Shun Yin, uh, the Dean of PSB Academy. And let's welcome Dr. Sam. Hello, Dr. Sam. Hi, hello. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Let me quickly introduce to our audience uh, about you. Uh, here is a brief profile. Dr. Sam is a primary responsible for providing leadership for PSB Academy's academic affairs and innovation in education. Dr. Sam graduated with a Bachelor of Science from National University of Singapore, Master of Business in Finance from University of Technology, Sydney, Australia, and Master of Social Science from NUS, again, a very reputed university, and also has done a PhD in International Business and Management from University of South Australia. He has taught subjects in economics, finance, and statistics. His current research interests are in the field of international political economy and higher education policy. Aside from his responsibility in teaching and research, Dr. Sam contributes as a member of the academic board, examination board, and assessment committee at PSB Academy. So, Dr. Sam, thank you very much for joining us, and I will come back to you uh, soon. Thank you. Thank you. And let's uh, move to our next speaker and let's welcome in the room, Mr. Mrugang Goel. Hi, Mrugang. Hi, Aslam. Hi, how are you? Hi, good evening, all. Yes. Thank you, Mrugang, for joining us. And uh, let me quickly introduce you to our audience. Mrugang is a country manager for India for PSB Academy. Being a part of the student recruitment industry since 2012, Mrugang recruited students to countries like UK, Canada, New Zealand, and many more. Now with three plus years of experience with PSB Academy, Singapore, he will be sharing his experience on how and why Singapore is an important destination for our students. Thank you, Mrugang, and Thank I'll you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So friends, as you know, our today's topic is exploring Singapore's top institute, PSB Academy, and also exploring Singapore as a study destination. So let's start with this topic and have Dr. Sam again in the room. And let's chat with him and try to understand through Dr. Sam's experience that why Singapore is a popular or could be a popular destination for Indian students. So Dr. Sam, uh, Indian students and parents, I'm sure that they are very much familiar uh, with your beautiful country, very innovative country. Uh, many of us must have taken the holidays uh, into your uh, countries to rest. But looking the same country from a student point of view is a very different ball game, and it requires a different perception. So we would like to learn from you uh, that why one must look at Singapore uh, to study abroad, and especially in South Asian countries. First of all, uh, thanks so much, Aslam, for the invitation. Uh, it's really a privilege to uh, be part of this uh, event. Uh, Singapore is a, a small global city uh, located you know, in the Southeast Asian region. Uh, it is a very safe country. Uh, I'm sure you, you are aware of that. Uh, a very clean uh, greenery uh, place uh, for one you know, to stay and, and work, work in. Uh, the, uh, the country is multiracial. We have about approximately 70% of the population who are Chinese, uh, about 15 uh, to 20% uh, Malays, and about 10 to 12% uh, who are Indians. Yeah. Uh, it's a multiracial country, and all of us lived uh, you know, uh, very well and peacefully uh, with each other. So students from India who come to Singapore uh, will have uh, you know, no issue assimilating uh, into uh, you know, the, the city uh, annex uh, culture. Uh, one will have no problem, for example, uh, looking for a place uh, to eat. <laughs> uh, Singapore's uh, first language is uh, English. Uh, you know, uh, when the Singapore gained uh, independence back in 1965, 
uh, a, a policy uh, was uh, initiated to make English uh, the uh, working language for the country. It's also as a means you know, to, to uh, uh, get the various ethnic groups uh, together to, to speak you know, a common uh, language. So uh, again, you know, students from India you know, uh, who, who are studying in Singapore uh, will have uh, no issue you know, communicating with uh, uh, Singaporeans and uh, the residents in Singapore. Absolutely. That's a very important point which you uh, which you have made uh, here, uh, because the language of instruction becomes also a very uh, important criteria for students to select. And many students sometimes they feel being a country like Singapore, because they must have learned that there is another also language which is being spoken. It's good to know that English is widely spoken and it's been widely followed across the country. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Uh, on this point, we would like to move further and would like to know uh, like, uh, students and parents also are equally concerned about uh, when we graduate uh, from the school, what are the career opportunities are there in that particular country and especially with regards to uh, the field chosen by the students and essentially students are looking for or historically students are looking to Singapore for business engineering and media programs, some for hospitality as well. So what's your take on to your career opportunities and what Singapore has got to offer in terms of career to students? Maybe I'll start with, you know, the, the perception that many have that, uh, you know, machines will replace uh, jobs, you know, uh, in, in, the, in, in the near future. Uh, I personally do not believe that this uh, will happen in our lifetime or even in uh, you know, the next uh, generation for, for various reasons. You know, one is you know, machine intelligence is not everything. Right? So for us, you know, we are uh, able to study emotions. Uh, we are able, we have subconsciousness you know, that allows us to uh, solve problems, look at various uh, issues at the same time uh, that allow us to make uh, intelligent decisions uh, that machines uh, uh, you know, cannot uh, replicate. Okay. So students who uh, would like to secure a job in the future would, uh, in my view, need to develop a, a T-shaped kind of uh, skills where the students have uh, expertise in one or two disciplines and knowledgeable in other disciplines to allow the person to uh, contribute effectively in interdisciplinary teams that are so common nowadays in uh, work settings uh, and in organizations. So Singapore, uh, Similarly, we'll be very much interested you know, in bringing in or recruiting organizations, recruiting talents who have the T-shaped uh, skills. So students, uh, I would uh, uh, you know, strongly suggest that you know, when you embark on a higher education qualification, look for you know, programs and opportunities to develop multidisciplinary skills uh, and knowledge. I mean, Singapore is a regional, is a, is a hub for, uh, you know, a lot of things, you know, like there's a Jurong Island, for example, you know, that offers a petrochemical uh, complexes, complex, is a wafer of fat hub and so on. So there are a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, students who, who have the T-shaped skills to, to uh, contribute, you know, uh, uh, to, to the organizations that you know, will uh, that are global in, in nature, right? that are global, uh, that uh, will you know will be very much you know welcoming students with uh, T-shaped skills. Right. So, Dr. Thomas, say friend, uh, that the machine uh, is uh, is not everything, and then intelligence accounts for a lot of other areas than just being intelligent like a robot. And you have got a huge opportunity to explore this a beautiful and uh, career-oriented destination uh, across the industries. Thank you, Dr. Sam, uh, for being so specific. Uh, moving further, 
Now, there are a lot of schools. As a student and as a parent, when I look at Singapore as a destination, there are a lot of schools which are public, which are private. Uh, how do I make a choice uh, to make a right school selection? And especially when it comes down to an institute like PSB Academy, uh, we've been into the academics and I personally had an opportunity to visit your beautiful campuses a lot of time. Uh, we know that it's a multi-award winning institute. However, still there are plenty of options. How would a student or parent would make a choice and why PSB can? This is a, a very important question, you know, uh, especially for students who are coming from, uh, you know, countries outside of Singapore. It's very important that uh, a, a proper uh, decision, a good decision uh, is made. So as you mentioned, uh, the accolades, uh, I think, are important. You know, it signifies the, uh, the quality, you know, a mark of quality that, is, that the institution has uh, attained. Uh, PSB has been awarded, uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, a large number of uh, uh, awards, you know, uh, including the best uh, education institution uh, by uh, various uh, uh, rating uh, agencies. Uh, the other thing that, I, I, to me, I think is important is, uh, you know, uh, in Singapore, there is a, uh, a committee called the Committee for Private Education that uh, governs, uh, you know, uh, the education institutions, private education institutions in Singapore. So uh, as a mark of quality, uh, the uh, CP, the Committee for Private Education, uh, awards uh, first, you know, the, uh, the license to operate through uh, the, the uh, ERF, they call it. Uh, and then furthermore, uh, institutions that have the, uh, demonstrated higher quality, they will be awarded uh, the Edu Trust, what they call the Edu Trust certification, which is a uh, uh, certification that institutions have must have in order to uh, offer uh, external uh, degree programs, as well as to recruit uh, international students. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased to inform that the PSB Singapore, uh, PSB Academy. Uh, was one of the earliest institutions that uh, was awarded the Edutrust uh, certificate. And of course, uh, you know, it's important to look at the, the type of programs that the school offers. Uh, there are schools uh, that, you know, very much concentrate uh, in business courses uh, or IT courses. Uh, PSB Academy is um, somewhat rare uh, in the private education sector in the sense that it offers uh, not only the business and IT courses, uh, it offers engineering courses, sports sciences courses, as well as uh, uh, life science courses. So there is a wide, a wide range of uh, courses for students to uh, you know, select. Uh, to me, I think the, the other thing is, you know, the opportunity to develop, you know, your holistic, develop holistically. Uh, you know, studying for a education qualification is one thing. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, you need to have a variety of skills in order to, uh, you know, to, to, uh, uh, to, to compete with the global workforce. So at PSP Academy, uh, you know, we, one of our, uh, uh, values is that you know we, we, we want to nurture our students. So there are a wide range of uh, societies, you know, clubs, you know, that students can participate, join, you know, uh, when they uh, join us as, as students. And through these activities, students are able to identify their strengths, develop their leadership qualities, and also to find out what their weaknesses are. You know, and then through uh, participation in these activities, uh, you know, they can overcome uh, such challenges. Sorry, Aslam, I think you are muted. Sorry. So, thank you very much, Dr. Singh. So, I think that in today's DNA, it's very important uh, for students to develop the overall personality and not just look at uh, the degree as an outcome. And what you rightly said, that the holistic approach 
uh, to develop uh, and groom oneself to face the tomorrow's challenge is the most important thing. And I guess uh, the PhD Academy is on the right path to develop the students for this very essential skills. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sam, for this piece of information. Though you touched upon the courses, but I would like to invite Murugang also in the room. And at this point of time, I also uh, have Murugang talking about, uh, Murugang, from Indian students and parents' point of view, what are the courses which you feel are very popular among Indian students and parents? And those who are listening us first time, uh, maybe that want to look at those programs, especially at PSB Academy. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Sam, for all that you have introduced. Uh, and thank you, Aslam, for giving us this opportunity again uh, through a lift. Uh, so as you asked me this question about what do the Indian parents you know, uh, look for when they are looking at Singapore on the products, on the courses, the students should look for when they are coming to Singapore. Uh, so my my thing with this generation is very different, okay, Aslam. I, I think that uh, if Indian students, that psychology of doing a BCom or doing a BA or doing a BBM, you know, that has changed over the time. Now I see a generation coming up where student wants to do very futuristic program. You know, they want to maybe get into AI, they want to get into media and design, they want to get into sports exercise science. So now giving this as a platform, PSB as a platform, students, Indian students can come and do a program that they are very good at. You know, they don't have to do a program just because of their family tells them. They have to come and do a program what actually is good for them because digital media has opened up number of doors for, I think, everybody, you know, like pandemic, you know, COVID has opened up a lot of doors. People have gone work from home. Uh, you know, a lot of things happening. People are taking care of their own self. So I think, you know, the a, a complete new generation has woken up in this COVID situation and they want to come and do something better for themselves. They want to do something better for the society. And that program, yes, ESB offers them and in Singapore, which is, as Dr. Sam said, you know, one of the best destinations country. Uh, looking at, you know, very close to India, uh, very futuristic, very industry oriented. So we have programs in uh, data science, you see, digital marketing, we have graphic media designs, sport exercise science. So this, this psychology of student needs to make them understand, yes, you know, this is the futuristic program. Maybe 10 years down the line, this is the, this is the programs that, you know, will be there in the market for a long run. So that's how I would tell the parents to look at look at the students or, or or their kids' career of their focus of their interest and come and choose the right program for them. And we have it. Right. I think it's a very important point what you made, Murugan. Uh, so friends, if you're listening, uh, these are the two set of program which are available at PSB. One is the traditional way of uh, looking at the program which are traditionally available and always been available and famous. And this is another set of program which Mugang is pointing you out, uh, which are very futuristic in its own nature. And if you would like to really follow the uh, the unfollowed oh, yeah. pathways, so it makes a lot of sense to look at the AI, design, sports, and these kind of programs to explore PSB Academy. Uh, Mugang, the next question can see here uh, is that uh, do I require ILTS or any for form of uh, entrance exam to qualify for these courses? Okay, so Asam, we don't require any, we don't have any as such entry requirement, you know, it is completely on the basis of students' academics. Okay, if the student has uh, scored 55 or 60 percent and above in his 12th standard and they want to come to Singapore and they have a very good academic profile as well as an interest to come and do that particular program, yes, they can come and do it with PSB Academy. All right. We, as I said earlier as well, ILTS is not a mandatory thing. They just have to show us and letter that the medium of instruction is uh, something that we require because the current situation, I understand students are not able to generate the medium of instruction because the schools and colleges have been closed. But if the student is from an English uh, background, his, uh, you know, communication was in English in his school or is in workplace, we are still accepting those students without ILTS or any absence. Absolutely. So friends, here is another myth buster uh, that you don't necessarily always require the test, which are quite popular and many times because this test is also a kind of a business for many of the people to promote and to coach. So you don't need to unnecessarily embrace those coachings and those tests if it is not required, and especially in case of Singapore and PSB Academy, wherein 
uh, the evaluation is done differently. So rather than asking for the test, the evaluation is more rely on to your academics, which is more or less what we also follow here in India. And hence, it makes pre pretty decent sense that you have a decent academics. You have got a straightforward chance to get into a uh, PSB Academy. Thank you, Bhagam, for this piece of information. Thank you, uh, Thank you so much. Uh, what would be the typical living expenses uh, for a student to live in Singapore? Okay, so this is uh, this is something that every student has to be careful, or I would say, very known about when they are coming to Singapore. Okay, first of all, PSP have our own like we have our own dormitories. Okay, student can choose uh, dormitories with PSP Academy, or else there are other dormitories as well that the student can choose. Okay, which are very safe, very uh, you know, very nice for students who are coming from, uh, you know, Indian families. You get Indian food as well. On, in a lot of dormitories, you get Indian food. So, the, you know, it's it's one one is dormitory as a side, you know, where the student can live in. And the other side is where they can have themselves an apartment or they can stay with other students who are there in Singapore studying with PSB Academy and they can stay with them as well in an apartment. Though the dormitories as, you know, the cleaning or you can say the mess or, uh, you know, there are a lot of other factors in a dormitory that covers. So the cost of dormitories might be a bit higher compared to an apartment. So here, there, I think a student will have to decide as per their budget, I would say, uh, depending if they want to go for a four bed share, six bed share, three bed share, two bed share or a single bed, you know, in a dormitory. And in apartments as well, it's a similar thing. It depends on how the student wants to, uh, you know, choose their apartments, like they want to go on a sharing basis, they want to go on an individual basis. But yes, uh, coming back to a narrow thing, yes, the, the accommodations are pretty smooth, very easy, very comfortable and very welcoming as the transportation system of Singapore that adds on to your accommodation because everything is so well connected, uh, you know, be it your dormitory, be it the campus, be it your apartment, you are so well connected in and around Singapore that it takes hardly some time, you know, for you to travel from the campus to the accommodation or from the accommodation to the campus. So what would be the approximate per month cost you would suggest okay. students should be ready with? I would suggest if they are looking at a dormitory option that starts from anything from seven hundred dollars Singapore dollars per month goes up to thousand twelve hundred thousand fifteen hundred depending on what kind of accommodation they are going for. And if they go for an apartment, anything from four hundred dollars up to eight hundred dollars or even thousand dollars, if they are going on a sharing basis, that's what I would tell as a budget for the students. And for food monthly expenses. So food, maybe, you know, $200 additional on top of whatever is your accommodation cost, depending on how much you eat, uh, you know, what you eat uh, depends on that. So your accommodation also at times when you are staying in an apartment or in dormitory will have uh, maybe an additional fee that you might have to pay for your food. If you pay, you might get your lunch, dinner, your breakfast, everything included. Same goes with your accommodation as well. If you pay an additional fee on top of your accommodation, that will be, uh, you know, that covers all your costs from your breakfast, your lunch, and dinner. Okay, so, fair enough. so it's around six hundred plus uh, per month, approximate expenses. Yes, the yes. Expenses. You can count it uh, to study in Singapore. Thank you, Murugan, for this piece of information. So uh, we are just uh, on time. So uh, let me go back to for uh, to Dr. Sam for the last question. Dr. Sam, you're, uh, you've been uh, studying in Singapore, you've been studying uh, across Australia. So uh, we would like to have uh, one piece of advice from you for our Indian students and parents who are listening to you and who are uh, desired to come to Singapore for higher education. What is your advice for them, you being an international student in your life? Enjoy the learning process. You know, it's best to, uh, to learn to come with an open mind you know, to absorb and learn from your lecturers, from your friends, from your peers, uh, as much as you can. Uh, take part, you know, in the uh, activities that the, the school organizes. Uh, listen to the talks that we, you know, organized. Uh, we often bring in experts from the industry who come and talk to the students. So take part in all these events and, and enjoy the learning process. That would be my advice. Okay, here is the theme uh, coined by Dr. Sam. Enjoy the learning process and be an active participant 
even at outside the classroom and then you would not be far from achieving your success thank you dr sam for this golden words thank you mrugang uh, for joining us for this show i really appreciate your time and thank your you. insight thank you thank so you much thank you so much thank you so much thank you so uh, to to our listeners thank you for your patience and thank you for watching the show or those who are joining going to watch the recording session so if you have any a uh, question do feel free to contact us or our helpline number 9987099890 or visit our website alif.in our experienced counselor will be happy to assist you instantly my name is Sam Sheikh counselor and CEO of Alif signing off with a promise to come back again next friday sharp at 5 pm with another interesting topic and with some amazingly talented speakers to enlighten you on the subject matter that matters you the most until then stay safe and stay excited